Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have e to the power 1 over x equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. So first of all, I want you to observe that e to the power 0 is equal to 1. Hopefully you know that. You know for real numbers, e to the power 0 is equal to 1. And I also made a video on 0 to the power 0. So in general, x to the power 0 is equal to 1, even when x equals 0. But let me know what you think about it, because some people claim that 0 to the power 0 is not equal to 1, but it's equal to 0. Anyways, this is a very controversial topic, and that's a different story. But e to the power 0 equals 1. So does that mean 1 over x is equal to 0? But that equation actually doesn't have a solution. Does it? It doesn't. Well, what if x is infinity, but infinity is not a number? Well, we can kind of think about it this way, can't we? Limit as x approaches infinity of e to the power 1 over x is basically the limit as x approaches infinity. So what happens if x approaches infinity? 1 over x approaches 0, right? So we can also write this limit as e to the power 1 over limit as x approaches infinity of x. You see, the limit can go inside and outside. We have this interesting properties of limits. But as x approaches infinity, obviously, this is going to approach infinity. And the 1 over infinity approaches 0. And this approaches e to the power 0, which is 1. OK, so this limit is 1. It exists, right? Doesn't it? And I'll also show you a graph. Hopefully, you'll be convinced. But we're not doing any limits here. Come on. You gotta think differently. You gotta think non real. In other words, you need to complexify. And there's a good reason behind that. If you go ahead and take a look at this, the graph of e to the power 1 over x and the horizontal line y equals 1 do not intersect. How do we know that? Well, we just looked at the limits. And if x approaches negative infinity, the same thing is going to happen because 1 over negative infinity also approaches 0, right? And that's why the horizontal line y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote, not just an ordinary line. The graph is going to get closer and closer and closer on both sides, but it'll never touch or cross because we do know that this equation has no solution. So, but... When x is real, it has no solution, right? We still haven't checked complex numbers. So we got to think non-real, so we have to complexify things. Let's go ahead and do that. So in the complex world, wait a minute, what is this? Oh, I kind of zoomed in on the graph. So again, this is the graph of y equals e to the power 1 over x. And notice that what happens near 0, notice that when x values are very small, but negatively, they are very uh, actually large, right? Uh, actually, I shouldn't say the, that way. Uh, so something like a negative 0 0.0001, right? So they're negatively actually very small, but they're kind of large. And uh, we have 1 over negative 0, which is actually e, 1 over negative 0. That's going to be um, negative infinity. And e to the power of negative infinity is going to approach 0. That's why... The y values are super duper close to zero when our x values are close to zero, but on the negative side. Make sense? I hope I didn't confuse you because I usually tend to do that. But anyways, so we're going to do the following. We have e to the power 1 over x equals 1, and we're going to write the 1 as a complex number. And if you think about it, complex number, can I use this coordinate plane right here? Because it's already made, right? Suppose this is 1. Forget about that. And now our number 1 is here. And its distance from 0 is going to be, what happened to my other colors, like darker colors? Okay, let's use this one, maybe. So my the distance from 0 is just going to be 1 unit, so r is equal to 1. And theta, the angle, is just going to be 0 radians, or I can use 2 pi, 4 pi, and so on and so forth. So I can basically write this as e to the power 2 pi n multiplied by i. So let's go ahead and write it like this. i times 2 pi n. Here n is an integer. So we're looking at multiples of 2 pi. And this is great. 
because this allows us to solve this problem, which wasn't solvable in the real world. Okay, so hopefully you got the idea about how argon plane works. That's how you call it, right? This is the real part, this is the imaginary part, and that's how you express one. Now, from here we get the following equation. Obviously, you're going to natural log both sides, so on and so forth, but it's going to give you 1 over x equals 2 pi and I. Can I just write it that way? Put the I at the end. I wanted to write it this way first because usually a complex number is expressed as R times E to the I theta where theta is the argument of the number and R is the modulus or the absolute value of the number. But in this case R is 1 because our number is 1. So what can I do to solve this equation? We're going to basically flip both sides. In other words, the reciprocal of the reciprocal, kind of like a light switch, on, off, and then on again. Make sense? So x is going to be 1 over 2 pi and i. And now I want to get rid of the i at the bottom. That doesn't look good for obvious reasons. Let's go ahead and multiply by the conjugate. A lot of times people, including black pen, red pen, and nothing negative about him, obviously. He's a great mathematician, a professor, a great YouTuber. A lot of people use i. They multiply by i, but we're going to do it the cyber math way, which is multiplying by negative i, because the conjugate of i is negative. How do I know that? Well, i is 0 plus i, its conjugate is going to be 0 minus i. Make sense? Okay. So we're going to multiply by, I know some people are going to be complaining about it, like she's making a big deal out of nothing. Anyways, so i times negative i is negative i squared, which is 1. Yay! This is 1, so I can totally get rid of it. And from here, x becomes negative i over 2 pi n. If you want to write it like a standard form, you could also write it as negative 1 over 2 pi n multiplied by i. So the answer is imaginary, not just complex, but it's imaginary, it's real part is zero, zilch, okay? But let's go ahead and take a look at what Wolfram Alpha says about this, and also I'll tell you to check other things, okay? But let's go ahead and check it out to confirm our work, and yay, we got the same thing, and does not equal zero, obviously, right? Come on, you can't divide by zero, uh -uh. it's not like zero to the power zero. I know some people are going to say, hey, zero to the power zero is like zero to the power one, divide by zero to the power one, and it's not allowed, but it's a little different. Come on, check out Desmos, it says it's one, so I would trust Desmos, right, on that one, and on so many other things. But anyways, that's the solution, n is an integer, and Basically, that's it. I also would like you to check out A plus B I because I made a similar video. Or actually, I'll make one. But when you watch this, it was already made, right? Anyways, this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.